infections. In this study, we set out to examine the, the application of geotargeting during election periods. Geotargeting is an aspect of website personalization, which is the process of creating customized experience for vi visitors to a website based on their unique criteria. Uh, personalization has become the guiding principle for sorting and displaying information and services online. Social media platforms and search engines gather personal data, such as your age, gender, and location, as well as your personal activity, such as the terms you search, the types of videos you watch, the news outlets you turn to, and so on, in order to tailor search results and advertisements to your specific profile. Personalization has led to filter bubbles, which is a state of intellectual isolation that can result from a website algorithm selectively guessing what information you might like to see based on the, the information that the algorithm has gathered about you. We see this particularly on social media platforms and uh, shopping service platforms, but it also affects the search results and advertisements that we see. While per personalization may seem like a recent phen phenomenon it is, and is most often discussed as an aspect of Facebook, Google has been per personalizing search results since early 2004, as is illustrated in this article, in which Google uh, claims that the introduction of personalized web search will allow users to, move to more quickly access preferred results. So what exactly is geotargeting? Geotargeting is a method of detecting a website visitor's lo location to serve location-based content or advertisements. Uh, those of you who are not based in Riga uh, might have already experienced some form of geotargeting while scrolling through your Facebook feed. You may have received an ad for the uh, food del delivery app Volt or Yan Yandex Taxi, and that is all entirely based on the fact that you are here right now. Uh, geotargeting aims to improve the cost effectiveness of marketing programs as well as in individual user experience. It relies on the belief that un understanding a user's location will help companies deliver the right message at the right time. Uh, though it is a popular tool of marketing, it has the potential to be harnessed and abused for political purposes. The use of geotargeting is widely and publicly acknowledged by uh, so social media platforms, as is evident uh, in this snapshot, which is from Fa Facebook's data policy, which was updated in 2018, uh, explaining that they use location-related information, such as where you currently are, where you live, the places you like to go, and the people that you are physically close to, in order to personalize products and ads for them to then display to you. Uh, Geotargeting geo caused controversy in the wake of the 2016 US pre presidential election when it was discovered that the Internet Research Agency, a Russian company engaged in online influence campaigns, com combined personal information with geotargeting in order to pr promote socially devices, groups, groups, pages, and events to voters in the, the US. Similarly, Cambridge Analytica uh, coupled their psych psychographics with geotargeting in order to target uh, voters in swing states with political ads and personalized posts. Thus, it has be become apparent that one of the challenges faced by governments today is to understand when and whether an information campaign is targeting its citizens. The ability to recognize what information is targeted towards people inside a certain geographical boundary may be one way of tackling this problem, and that is what we set out to do in this report. We aim to examine our, the geotargeting of information in the context of the Indonesian presidential elections and Finnish parliamentary elections, both of which took place uh, in April of this year. Indonesia and Finland are un undoubtedly socioeconomically and culturally very different, and they also experience different levels of technological ad adaptation. However, they both faced important elections this year, and thus were good targets for analysis. 
To give you a bit of context on both of our case studies, Indonesia is the fourth most populous country in the world with a population of over 264 million inhabitants. It is very religiously and eth ethnically diverse and uh, contains the world's largest Muslim population. Uh, its voters are still um, influenced by ethnic and religious sentiments, and the main issue of this election was the question of whether Indonesia should adopt a more Islamic political course or maintain a more, a more secular course. On the other hand, Finland is one of the most sparsely populated countries in Europe, uh, with, a, with an ethnically homogenous population of around 5.5 million. Uh, the main issues in this election were climate change, social welfare, and immigration. And recently, fin Finland ranked first in a study of 35 countries on resilience to fake news, um, and ranked with very high media l literacy. So, um, our research aimed to answer two questions. First, did geotargeting occur in Finland and in Indonesia? And if so, did geotargeting pose a threat to the democratic process in either country? The core problem of this study was to infer what content was being targeted to certain audiences in specific areas. We assumed that geotargeted content would contain two of three characteristics. It would be first, visible in one region and not others. Second, appear in, in two, uh, twice or more in that region, denoting the pop popularity of that post, or it would appear as a paid-for ad in that post, ex explaining why it is in, in the data set. During the time period of the 25th of March to the 17th of April, we searched general election-related keywords in different regions in Finland and, and Indonesia on Google, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We recorded the top 10 search results on each platform per search, as well as advertisements on Google. After that, uh, we manually identified the posts that fit our geotargeting criteria and qualitatively analyzed them in order to understand their content. In Indonesia, we uh, observed that Facebook was the platform featuring the most results that appeared in one region only. We refer to this as regionally diverse. The most populous regions in Indonesia of Central Java, East Java, and West Java were the most targeted with election-related content. And finally, we found that geo-targeted posts often shared articles about alleged voter fraud um, among the in Indonesian diaspora living in Malaysia. For a bit of context on, on this, in early April, the Indonesian Electoral Commission ordered an investigation into allegations that thousands of ballots had, had been cast in favor of incumbent President Joko Wid Widodo days before polling opened. Videos of the warehouse that was holding these ballots went um, viral, and some of them we actually found embedded in, in the articles that were geotargeted. Compared to Indonesia, we found minimal election-related results in, in Finland overall. Again, the, the most regionally diverse content in Finland was found on Facebook. And again, we, we observed the highest rates of geotargeting in the three most pop, densely populated regions of Uusima, Pirkanma, and Finland proper. Um, our most notable finding were that ads on Google supported the National Coalition Party, which was a member of the previous ruling coalition, uh, in, in an assumed attempt to boost their, their visibility to voters. We believe that these ads were paid for by the party itself, but we cannot be 100% certain of this. Overall, uh, we found that Facebook featured the most re regionally diverse content in both cases. Facebook clearly places an emphasis on delivering location-specific content, though we do not know if this actually increases the likelihood of geotargeting taking place. We also found that geotargeted con content concentrated on regions with the largest populations and urban centers. 
This is a logical conclusion, as these regions have the largest electorates in, in the uh, countries that politicians are accountable to. We also found that the most popular and, and widespread content was apolitical and educational. For example, we came across a number of Wikipedia pages explaining the political process in both countries, as well as videos on you, YouTube explaining to viewers how to properly cast a vote. Um, we repeatedly observed geo-targeted content in Indonesia regarding this ballot scandal in Malaysia, suggesting a possible attempt to undermine, um, to undermine trust in the el electoral process. And finally, due to the lack of geo-targeted content in Finland, we assessed that the election process was not uh, jeopardized by geo-targeting. To conclude, we believe that geo-targeting can pose a threat to de democratic processes and should be researched further. More sub subversive messaging might be unveiled if we monitor party-centric or issue-centric keywords and, and phrases. In this instance, we chose to use general keywords in order to avoid introducing any sort of bias into our data. But it did also lead to a lot of noise that we had to sift through. Our research also drew upon a limited data set. However, we believe that geotargeting should be examined over time and on a much larger scale in order to identify any sort of long-term long trends. An aspect that we did not consider was geotargeting across different devices, mobile versus desktop. GPS tracking in our mobile devices allows for more precise geotargeting and timely delivery of information of, um, and of potentially divisive information. Finally, in, in conclusion, we believe that investigating geotargeting is important to understand how social media platforms deliver sp specific content to their users, especially during election periods. Thank you. <coughs>